At the start of December, I received my new bike for 2023, a BMC Team Machine SLR01. Now, if you've been following me for the last 12 months, you'll know that BMC have been amazing at looking after me with bikes. And my new bike for 2023 has three specific upgrades made to it to make it the fastest bike I've ever owned. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about those three upgrades, what they are, why they make the bike so fast, and why I'm super excited to be riding this thing for the next 12 months. So without further ado, let's get into it. This is a review of my new 2023 BMC Team Machine SLR01. Alrighty, so let's jump into it. This is my last video for 2022. I wanna say a massive thanks to you guys for supporting me throughout 2022, and I hope the support will continue into the new year. I also wanna say a massive thank you, of course, to BMC, not only for looking after me with bikes this year, but also for their continual support in all of my endeavors that I've had. I've wanted to do a bunch of travel this year, and I got that done. I wanted to do a bunch of events, and I got those done as well, and BMC has been integral in making that happen. I also wanna say a massive thank you to Attacker as well for looking after me with my cycling kit throughout this year. So with all those thanks being said, tomorrow is the uh, new year and I wanna finish this year with a nice little wrap up of the new bike that I'm gonna be riding. That's this bike, my BMC Team Machine SLR01. As you will have seen in previous videos, I've been riding a BMC Team Machine SLR01 for the last 12 months, the blue and red one. That was a super lightweight bike with a focus on climbing. The new bike for 2023 has actually got more of a focus on speed. So the three upgrades that I'm gonna talk about in this video are the 50 millimeter deep wheels that the bike comes with, the ceramic speed drivetrain that I have put on the bike and also the aero handlebars that are on there as well, which were a special request that I made from BMC. The handlebars are actually the thing that excites me most about this bike. But before we go too far, let's jump into the most visually striking and the first thing that I want to talk about, and that is the DT Swiss wheels that come with the new BMC Team Machine SLR01 2. Now I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. When I had the bike built at DOS off track, of course, as you can see, we put the 50 millimeter wheels on the bike. However, shortly after, once I had done one or two rides, I whipped those wheels off and I put them on Chasserelle wheels that have been running for the last 12 months on the bike. The reason that is, is because as a content creator, I am very often taking at least one, if not both hands off the handlebars and having a deeper set of wheels on the bike means that I'm slightly more susceptible to crosswinds and getting blown around. Having said that, when I did actually actually ride those wheels for the first couple of times. They were extremely quick. The wheels that come with the bike are the DT Swiss Arc 1100 die cut DB wheels from DT Swiss. They're a 50 millimeter deep carbon rim and they've got a DT Swiss 180 hub. The 180 hub is a very lightweight hub from DT Swiss and the 50 millimeter wheels developed with Swiss side are exceptionally aerodynamic. These are really, really quick. Once I got the bike above 36, 37 kilometers an hour, you just notice that it holds its speed so much more and this is especially noticeable when you're going downhills or you're pushing really hard on the flat. The reason that BMC decided to pair this bike with these wheels is because they offer the best aerodynamics for the weight and it gives you a really good package of weight versus speed. The total weight for the wheel set is 1380 grams which is actually really really light for a 50 millimeter deep set of wheels. I am going to be saving these wheels for when I'm racing however for most of my training I don't want a deep set of wheels on the bike as I said because of that fear of crosswinds and also I just don't need to be going as quick as possible while I'm in training. It's better to have a slightly shallower set of wheels that protects me from crosswinds but that also means that I have to work a little bit harder when I'm at higher speeds. There are hundreds of videos on YouTube about why aerodynamic wheels make you faster and this is very very true. There's no denying that the 50 millimeter wheels are quicker and the ARC 1100 wheel set does actually come in a 68 and an 80 millimeter deep rim as well so you can get a really fast wheel set if you want to. However, my Team Machine SLR01 came with the 50 millimeter wheels because BMC see that as the perfect optimal balance between speed and weight for most people doing all sorts of riding. As I mentioned, DT Swiss developed these wheels with Swissside. Swissside is an aerodynamics company that helps brands focus on getting the fastest possible products they can, the most aerodynamic designs into their products. The only thing I do want to say as an opinion from myself is that the wheels are slightly narrower internally than I would like. These wheels 
wheels are 20 millimeters on the inside and 27 millimeters on the outside. So they're quite narrow on the inside, which means that when you're running a larger tire, there's this bit more of a sort of circular circumference to the tire, as opposed to a wider internal rim, which allows for more of a U-shaped tire. That U-shape in the tire gives you more grip, it gives you more comfort, and it means that the bike actually goes a little bit quicker. So while the wheels are really, really great, and I love the fact that the Team Machine SLR01 now comes with deeper race wheels, I do think that there's some development that could be done there into the future as well. So that's the wheels that come with the bike. As I said, I'm gonna save them for racing. They're a very, very fast wheel. And yeah, that is one of the things that makes this bike the quickest bike I've ever owned. Okay, so on to my second point and the second upgrade that I made to this bike to make it the fastest bike I've ever owned, and that is the Ceramic Speed drivetrain. If you've been following me for a little while, you'll know that I've had Ceramic Speed on my last few bikes. It's an upgrade I made for the first time in about 2018 when I got my first Steel Lagore, and I noticed an immediate difference in how smooth the drivetrain was when I added a Ceramic Speed oversized pulley wheel system and a Ceramic Speed ceramic bottom bracket to the bike. There's some simple physics involved with this, a smoother drivetrain is going to mean that every watt you put through the pedals is going directly into the drivetrain and none of your energy is being used to overcome the resistance within that drivetrain. By upgrading both the bottom bracket and the pulley wheel system, my entire drivetrain system is running ceramic bearings and the oversized pulley wheels mean that there's that little bit less resistance in the pulley wheels at the back there. The ceramic speed drivetrain is quite a visually striking and noticeable feature on the bike and it's something that people either love or hate. For me, I didn't actually like the look of it initially Initially, but I did know that the upgrade would be worthwhile from a ride standpoint and now I'm used to it I don't think it looks too bad It's something that a lot of people do notice when they look at the bike and they think "Ooh, Is that an upgrade or is it just one of those things that Tristan has been sold and is trying to sell people on? The truth is for me I notice a definite difference in how smooth the drivetrain is part of the reason this is is because the ceramic bearings within the bottom bracket and the pulley wheel system are very 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 smooth and they mean that any resistance is taken out of the drivetrain and secondly because of the larger circumference of the jockey wheels there means that the chain has less of a tight arc to curve around when you're pedaling the bike. If you think about the oversized pulley wheel system as something like a hairpin bend on the road, a tighter hairpin is gonna require a tighter lean and a slower curve around that corner. When the chain has to wrap tightly around a smaller jockey wheel, it requires more force from your legs to get the chain to move around that jockey wheel and up to the next jockey wheel and then onto the cassette. By spreading out that circumference, the chain can pass more easily through the jockey wheels and into the drivetrain, and you find that there's less resistance against you when you're pedaling. Some people have asked me if it changes the way that the bike shifts gears, and I would say yes, there is a difference in the shifting speed between having ceramic speed oversized pulley wheels on your bike and not. However, that difference is so, so minor that it will have absolutely no impact on your actual real world performance. It's very easy for people to get caught up in the tiny details like, will my bike shift slower? For me, as someone who rides 20,000 Ks a year and who races all the time, I can tell you that it's not enough of a difference not to run it. I've found the smoothness in the drivetrain more of an advantage than any kind of shifting speed difference that makes for a disadvantage. So that is upgrade two that's made to the bike to make it the fastest bike I've ever owned. Now let's jump in to the third and final reason this bike is the fastest bike I've ever owned, and that is the handlebars. The BMC Team Machine SLR01 1 and 2, this specific bike and the one I was riding last year, along with the SRAM Red laden version and the Campagnolo laden version, all come with a very integrated front end. This is something I spoke about in my past bike review video when I reviewed my last bike, and I'll say it again, the front end of this bike is exceptionally clean, and they've made the bike as quick as they possibly can by integrating all the cables through the handlebars into the stem and into the head tube. There are no cables exposed anywhere, and this means that there's as 
as little aerodynamic drag as they can possibly get in the bike. The handlebars on my new 2023 model are not the stock aero bars that come with the bike. However, they are an aerodynamic handlebar that is now included on the BMC Kias. The BMC Kias is BMC's race gravel bike. And what they've done for me is they've taken a set of handlebars from the BMC Kias and they've actually provided them to me with my new 2023 bike. The reason these bars are that bit more aerodynamic than the original ones that came with the bike is this. These handlebars are slightly narrower at the top than they are at the drops. And this means that you can get your hands really, really close together and tuck your frontal area right down to give yourself the smallest body position possible to mean you cut through the air as best as possible. These handlebars on my bike are 36 centimeters at the top and 42 centimeters at the drops. This means that you still get the handling capabilities of the wider bars at the bottom, but when you're on the hoods, you can tuck in really, really tight and go really quick through the air. Is this noticeable? Absolutely. It is the number one thing that I noticed when I got on the bike for the first time, being able to bring my hands much closer together and tuck my upper body in as tight as possible. As you can see, when I compare the bars that I was running on my previous BMC Team Machine SLR01, the bars that I've got for my new bike, the handlebar tape doesn't actually come in quite as far in the new bars. The reason for that is to increase the aerodynamics in the handlebars and also because of the fact that you don't really need bar tape in the middle of the bars. When you've got your hands wrapped around the handlebars and you're climbing in the tops there, you don't find that your hands are slipping off the bars because you're not pulling on them with too much force. So you only really need bar tape on the ends of the bars where your wrists might be touching. I do want to say that if you are looking at getting a BMC T-Machine SLR01, it's most likely still going to come with the standard handlebars that have been provided on the previous year model bikes. And I do want to say that don't let that scare you. Those bars are exceptionally aerodynamic and I found them really, really comfortable while riding them for the last 12 months. The only reason I made this upgrade is because I had the option to. I said to BMC, is that a possibility? And they said, yes, these bars will work with the new bike. And yes, we can provide them to you if you like, but it's not a stock option. And I wouldn't say to rush off to your local bike shop and demand you get a set of these Kias bars. Had I only had the one option of those standard bars that came with the bike, I would have been more than happy with those. But given I had the option from BMC, I decided I'd go for them. One of the other small but noticeable differences with these new bars that I've got on my bike are the fact that they're a little bit thinner through the tops and that means that they're that little bit more aerodynamic. The previous bars I had had slightly more of a round profile to them whereas these new ones have got a slightly flatter profile which cuts down the frontal area of the handlebars by just a few millimeters and means that the handlebars will cut through the air just that little bit more. One of the things that I have noticed while riding this bike for the last couple of weeks is that the narrower handlebars at the top do change the handling of the bike and it's something I'm still getting used to. Narrower handlebars means that your hands are closer together at the tops. And what that means is when you lean around a corner, you don't feel like you've got as much stability in the bike. That's where putting your hands on the drops when you're going downhills and around corners means that you're more stable. Not only does it bring your center of gravity lower, but it means that your shoulders are a little bit wider and you've got slightly more stability in your handling. With these slightly narrower bars at the top being 36 centimeters, I have noticed that when I lean around corners, I'm not quite as confident. I do think that this is is something I will get used to over time. I'm really hoping so, but for the moment, I'm just taking it easy while I get used to the bike, especially because it's winter outside and I'm riding on some sketchy roads. So yeah, in summary, I do wanna say that the new handlebars are definitely the quickest thing I've ever upgraded on my bike. It makes a massive difference to how small I can get my frontal area. However, I would say that the handling is something I still need to get used to, and the bars also don't come stock on a Team Machine SLR01 if that's what you're looking at. Alrighty, so that is the three things on the bike that I've noticed make the biggest difference to how fast the bike goes. However, there are a couple of extra little things I need to mention on the bike because I did feature them in the bike build video and a few people have actually asked me about them so I'm just gonna address those now. The first of which is the absolute black brake pads. These are a graphene coated brake pad that is apparently meant to make them quieter and more grippy and offer you better heat resistance when you're going down big long descents. I'm gonna be really, really honest with you. I don't think that these brake pads necessarily make a world of difference. However, I have no Notice that the brake pads are notably more quiet than my old brake pads that I had in my previous bike. Whether that is these specific graphene coated brake pads or whether that's just the fact that they're brand new, I couldn't actually tell you. However, it's nice to have a slight 
upgrade to the brake pads. And uh, yeah, I wanna say a big shout out to Absolute Black for providing me with those, even if I'm not absolutely gushing over them because I wanna make this review as honest as possible. The second thing I wanna talk about is the tires. A few people commented and said, why did you put such a low end tire on this bike? There are two reasons behind that. The first is that it's currently winter and I'm not actually racing. So I'm not looking for the fastest tire I can possibly run in winter. Instead, I want a tire that's just gonna handle lots of miles on the bike, be comfortable. And also that when I go through, they don't cost too much to replace. The tires that I've got on the bike are American Classic Timekeeper tires. They're 700 by 30 C wide. So they're quite a wide tire. Now I can run these because I've got disc brakes and also there's the clearance in the frame. However, I have noticed since I've been running these tires that the slightly wider tire means that there's a little bit extra weight in the wheel in terms of that rotational weight and also that they don't quite roll as quick as a fast set of race tires. But again, these tires are a very good price point and for winter training miles, they're an excellent option. These tires retail at about 30 or 35 euros. So they're really good value compared to something like a Vittoria Corsa, which is probably gonna retail for almost double that. Full disclosure, these tires were provided to me by American Classic and I've been running their tires in training for the last little while. However, I am gonna fit a set of race tires, probably some Vittoria Corsas when it comes to racing on the bike because that speed upgrade and that slight weight reduction is something I'm going to be looking for. Okay, and one last change that I've made to the bike since that bike build video that I want to address is the crank set. Now the crank set I have on the bike is the Shimano Durace 9100 crank set. The reason I took off the Shimano Durace 9200 cranks that came with the bike is for two reasons. The first reason is that I run 165 millimeter cranks and the bike came with 170s. The reason I run 165 millimeter cranks is the fact that my saddle height is super short, 685 millimeters, and I've been running slightly shorter cranks for the last six or seven years now and notice that it really helps my short legs when I'm climbing up hills. It means that I get a more circular pedal stroke. It means that I can push power all the way through the pedal stroke and I find that it's more comfortable for my short legs. The second reason that I'm running the 165 millimeter cranks is the fact that I've got a Shimano Durace left-hand side stages power meter on the bike to measure the small amount of watts that I'm putting through the drivetrain. That stages crank arm on the left there is 165 millimeters. So of course I need to run a 165 millimeter crank set on the right. To be completely honest with you, I've been running this stages for the last few years and I'm never happy with it. I'm convinced it runs 10 to 15 watts low, whether that is my specific stages, whether that stages in general, I'm not sure. However, to upgrade to a new power meter is gonna cost a bunch of money that I need to put aside and put into a power meter. I've been thinking of trying some Asioma pedals or maybe some Garmin vector pedals or something like that. But for the moment, I'm running my stages, even though I don't think it's that accurate, it's accurate to me, which is the main thing with a power meter. And I know that when I'm climbing up hills, as long as I focused on my numbers and no one else's, I am going at the right speed. So that's why I'm running that Durace 9100 crank set and not the 9200 crank set that came with the bike. As soon as I can get a set of 9200 cranks in 165 millimeters, I absolutely will snap those up, but I cannot find them anywhere. If someone from Shimano wants to reach out to me and can sort me out with a set of 165 millimeter 9200 cranks, I would be forever indebted to you. But for the moment, that's what I'm running on the bike. It's a shame it doesn't keep the bike looking 2023, but the bike is designed for training and racing and I put practicality above anything. Alrighty, and so that is the full review of my new 2023 BMC Team Machine SLR01. It is a beautiful bike to look at, it's a beautiful bike to ride, and it's something I'm super excited to ride and race over the next 12 months. Again, I wanna say a massive thank you to BMC for looking after me with this bike. I feel exceptionally lucky, and I'm very, very appreciative to them for continuing to support my cycling and my video making. And I wanna say a massive thanks again to you guys for looking after me this year as well, with all your likes and comments, and for all the subscribers that have joined over the past 12 months. I hope you guys have had a great Christmas. I hope you have a great new year and start to 2023. And I'll see you in a couple of exciting videos coming very, very soon. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Adeo.